Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Serving with Purpose. I'm Danny. And I'm Carolina. And before then, introduce your amazing, amazing guest that we are super excited. I have some messages for you. So we are here on YouTube every Tuesday, but we are also on Reality Network. So the episodes go there prior than YouTube. So get your subscription. Use the code SERVE to get our discount. Then it's still serving at Sir and Brosco Chickens and Waffles. So go visit her. And I'm still serving at Stark Red in Panorama City. And if you go there and show your subscription to Reality Network, got a free appetizer so just go say hi and get some free food yes. and you can go ahead Danny okay yes. yay <laughs> okay so um today is a real treat because I know and adore and love this person right here he's a model for several campaigns okay he's a hair brand ambassador okay He's a runway and print model, okay? <laughs> and he's slaying and tending bar at Sir With Me. Please give a warm welcome to Venus. Oh my God, hello. Hi, Venus. <laughs> You yes. came to slay. <laughs> Honey, all I do is eat. <laughs> so you're one of those annoying ones, like, yeah. oh my God, the skinny model that I can eat whatever I want. Oh my God. <laughs> and I'm going to still wake up and slay. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I'm a big bag jack. Like, I'm eating all day long and I'm still looking fly as hell. <laughs> <laughs> you better you serve it. with a purpose, okay? Yeah. He serves with purpose, okay? <laughs> Oh my God! So you're all you, he is also from Dallas, Texas. I am. Well, oh. a farm town, an hour outside of Dallas. Okay, oh. so tell yeah. me what that was like growing up for a beautiful person like yourself to be growing up in a small farm town in oh. Dallas, Texas. Uh, <laughs> what was it was that scary like? as hell. It was, <laughs> it was Are a they still nightmare. Looking for you? <laughs> are they still looking for you with the watchdog, buddy? I'm sure they are. They're, they're behind a screen talking shit. That's what they're doing. Now. Oh, no. But hi. I, I think right. that, uh, yeah. Hi, haters. Because you ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, okay. um, Yeah, I just think growing up on a small town, it was just not the vibe for me. I never really related to anyone. I was trying to run as fast as I could. I remember wanting to move to L.A., 11 years ago is how long I've oh, wow. known I was going to move here. So, so how old are you? I'm 26 years old. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You're a baby. I know. Thank I God love I'm it. young. <laughs> I know, right? And you still have your whole life ahead yeah. with the things I would do. Exactly. I have 26 years old. Let me <clears> just tell yeah, you. Yeah, that's why we make it moves young. <laughs> Hello. So. I love it. So you, okay, I'm sorry. I cut you off. No, okay, so you said 11 years ago you knew, or since you were 11 years old. No, um, 11 years ago, I went okay. to LA. So you're 15. Before that, I was like, I got to get the fuck out of here. I just didn't know where I was going to go. Got it. So, got it. Got it. Yeah. I, <laughs> but now, as an adult, I do appreciate where I come from. Mm -hmm. But for so many years, I was like, fuck Texas. Fuck everyone. I don't want nothing to do with none of y'all. Exactly. And uh, now I'm at a place where I'm like, I actually feel at peace when I go home. Okay. And, but whenever I'm here... I feel like I'm surrounded by so many superficial people mm. and just complete just some of the worst humans I've ever met in my life, and then they're just constantly around me. Mm -hmm. So when I go home, I actually feel like I can breathe. Mm -hmm. I'm in a whole other world. Because but you're I used to feel the opposite way. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. So you grew up feeling like, okay, I'm in different skin. Well, this is not my environment, that's for mm -hmm. sure. I'm way too fabulous for yeah. a small farm town. Shout out to the small farm town, yeah. okay? Because mm -hmm. they produce this beautiful uh, the person that's, right that's here. That's true. Mm -hmm. I know, right? So, but you grew up and you knew, okay, this is not for me. I have yeah. bigger and better things. I, I knew I needed to go make an impact on the world, and I would never be able to do that in such a small town. Ooh. And I always knew I was going to move to L.A., and I think I just felt like I had a bigger purpose in life than to just be sitting there doing mundane day-to-day -day tasks and around the same people over and over. Like, I wanted to go out to the big city, mm -hmm. make a name for myself, show the world who I am, and that's what I'm doing now, and it feels yes, so fucking good. Yes, you are! Yes, you are! So, literally, how did you decide to come here? What did you do? How did you pick up and go? Did you just... Because it was a really 
heart wrenching story for me or heartwarming, I would say. <laughs> well, whenever I came out of the closet, I ended up moving schools to a little smaller town where the my class was like 26 people for mm. graduating high school. Mm -hmm. In yeah. Texas? In Texas. Crazy. Yeah. I was just going through all the struggles of coming to figure out that I'm gay and mm -hmm. telling mm -hmm. everyone that I am. What made you decide? Where were you like, okay, let me, this is what I'm doing. I always knew that I wanted to move to LA. And um, then you getting up and did you drive? Did you fly? How did you? I just got up, uh, COVID had just hit. And so mm. I just packed all my things in my car and drove straight to LA. I didn't say bye to but one person and the Stop. people I was living with. I no know one, it, no I one know at all. it. I said, I gotta I get the hell out of here. I don't give a fuck about nobody, anything. I'm out, me and my dog. My shit was packed. He was sitting on top of all the shit in my passenger seat. <laughs> and we were flooring it through the desert. And we were here within 19 hours. I and then I never went back for wow. three years. Get out. So what was that? OK, so when you come here, you touch down, you're like, oh, my God. So as soon as I got here, it was like the apocalypse because everything was like boarded up. No yes. one was outside. It was just it felt like the end of the world to me. I was like, this is so weird as hell. Like, And it felt fever dream like because it was like all my dreams had come true like my only dream back then was just to move here mm -hmm. so when the, i accomplished that i was like wait there's no one outside everything's boarded up it looks like a war zone it's mm. silent everywhere i drive <laughs> there's no cars on the road i was like this is creepy as hell like i am legend like no, you know like when, exactly when all the weeds growing up no, it was terrifying. freaking animals <laughs> so then i like got this little apartment that was a studio and I, my window was just in the corner of someone else's balcony, so I didn't have that much light, oh, and everything no. was brown inside. Oh, God. And so I stayed in quarantine for like 10 months. Oh, my God. Yeah, and so I was just, just like rotting boarded away. up looking at a brick wall yeah. or somebody's balcony. Yeah, it was <laughs> like, terrible. My hair was falling out. I was oh, like, you were it was depressed. my prime vegan. I went vegan around that, or like a few months before I had moved here. Mm -hmm. So I'm like malnourished. Uh, yes. I yes, can't afford are. to eat anything. Right. And my hair Because vegan out. food is expensive as yeah. hell. Let's just be honest. With that, I was broke as hell. <laughs> okay. And then I just, I wasn't leaving the house. You couldn't go anywhere. Right. I had no friends here besides Bailey. No. And so it was just a lot. But I, I mean, know. the struggle was real. So then after quarantine and the restrictions were lifted, it was like I had, was faced with another challenge. My car, my brake line had broke and I had broken my cell phone. No! Oh, oh no, I, I didn't. I broke my cell phone actually like a million times living here, but I actually I couldn't afford to pay my bill. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have a phone or a, a car. car. So I was walking to work. Two lifelines, yeah. okay. I was walking to work um, and then at a crystal store that I was working at. And I would use the phone that I had to connect to Wi Fi and I would Uber to my serving job. And I would do that every day. Damn. And it was, that was extreme. That was for like six months after Ooh. the pandemic. Oh my God, Venus. I didn't know so, any of this. I mean, when else will we talk about yeah, it? But God, honestly. It was a lot. Oh, that built character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you made it, you know. Walking it was... past all the homeless people to work every day, it just really humbles you. <laughs> it really does. No, it honestly. Does. And everyone says that. It's so funny. Justin was just on this a uh, guest on the show. He's also from Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. And he talked a lot about um, the a mat, the picture you have in your mind of mm -hmm. Hollywood, you yeah. know, when you first think about it, you know, girls in bathing suits, Venice Beach, you know, people rollerblading, you know, throughout yeah. mm -hmm. and the Hollywood sign and everyone's just yeah. cool and Good in convertibles. And yeah. Feed is and that amazing. what you're, is that what you thought as well? Yeah. When you I thought Bright Feet was going to be my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, true. <laughs> well, Angelina Jolie is mine, but no, I'm kidding. I'm lying. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> that is so funny. So how was, and he said that he was um, disappointed, <laughs> to say the least, when I he first got here. And he was just like, it's nothing but crackheads on Hollywood Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Nothing is the same. The homeless situation is out of control. Exactly. You know, like, what is that? Was, the, was that your same sentiment? I mean... Whenever I first moved here, I took I spent like that whole first year and a half just like driving up to Malibu and going to the beach. Come on. So I would go by myself Aww. and it was actually perfect because during quarantine I would go to the beach, there would be no one there mm -hmm. every single time. I would go to all the beaches and always be by myself. So I felt like I was in my own movie. Mm -hmm. And which I always think that. But, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm every walkway or hallway is a runway for me. So yeah, I feel exactly. you on that. Still relevant. But um yeah, no the 
I would stay more on the beach side. Okay. I didn't like downtown. It was scary as hell. Yes. And then it's scary for me too. And I was born and raised here, so yeah, no, I, I can't. I can't with all the chaos. Yeah, yeah now volunteer. <laughs> there's just there's just too much shit going on. And so then after you know all that time period where I didn't have a car and all that, I ended up moving to West Hollywood on Hollywood Boulevard over by Runyon Canyon. Oh, stop it! So I was seeing oh, every yeah. damn thing you could think of. <laughs> And I thought Hollywood Boulevard was going to be, like, this magical place. Yeah. And it was the, scary I'm... as fuck. <laughs> and I had a gym on Hollywood Boulevard. I would go to the L.A. Fitness and I'd walk there. Oh, honey. Yeah. No. I know. I had to get out of there real quick. Real fucking quick. Why? Now I'm in the valley uh-huh. in the in the safe neighborhood. Right. And I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I ain't about this shit. Oh, hell no. I would go walk my dog. He and it would just. Oh, Mountain. my God. <laughs> Yeah, basically 100 miles away from Don't West worry, Hollywood. they're cleaning for the Olympics. So. I know. Oh, she said that too. True. Yeah. No, I, no, I'm happy now. I'm Just glad. give us a second. Give us a second. But there are a lot of uh, good things about LA. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like, right. I was. But do you feel here's the place you have to be? 100%. Yes. This feels like home to me. I'll never leave LA. I know I've been to so many beautiful, like, countries and states, and this is home to me. Like, yeah. It, it's so magical. It feels like the it place where everyone's though. dreams come true. Everyone that lives here is very motivated. They believe in themselves. And I like being surrounded by people who have ambition and goals. And it's really nice and comforting. To, it like keeps you moving forward and never like you're always believing in yourself because you're surrounded by people who believe in themselves. So why wouldn't you? Exactly. A hundred percent. Everyone I think and it's all the people um that have come in are the transplants that yeah. have come from other places really I think make this place um, one of those. Yes, like they keep that energy of yeah. you're gonna mm-hmm. fulfill you your step dreams. Up your game. Yeah, you yeah. gotta you step to up your better. game. You can't take it for granted. I've lived in LA my entire life, and I've n- haven't been to half the places that the transplants have been to or tell me about. Like people tell me about my own city. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, like. And it's amazing, but I feel you on that, that energy of mm-hmm. just, yes, we can, this is do or die. We're going to make exactly. it or break it here, you know, either we going to bust pipes or create diamonds, True. you know, because the pressure's on. Yeah. Hollywood is another, it's a whole nother beast. L.A., it Tinseltown is. is a whole nother beast. People come here thinking that, you know, tomorrow, you know, I'm going to be famous and I'm going to be walking down the street and be discovered like Christina, you know, Christy Turlington or something. It's just like, babe, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Like Justin was saying, get in line, baby. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. even if you were a big fish in a small pond somewhere else, out here is a whole nother beast. So kudos to you. Yeah, I learned that the hard way, too. I moved Ooh, here and I was me. like, because, you know, I, I've always been like, I'm the fucking star of the yes, room. Alice. When I was a kid, always. So whenever I moved here, I was like, I'm the fucking star. And then I'm looking around like, why aren't y'all looking at me? The fuck? Like, <laughs> so I'm like, wait, why am I not famous already? This is annoying as hell. <laughs> right. So, so now that four years has passed and, and shit's moving along, I'm like, yeah, you got to come here. You got to fucking hustle. You got to make connections. Yes. You just got to be that bitch in every moment you can. And then eventually you'll get there. But this is not an over night thing you oh, gotta actually not, work baby. for that shit oh yes and if you Ooh. want it hard, hard enough hate you working. will oh hello I'm like I think I'm way too sexy to be you know working yeah but. that's, that's <laughs> I've thought that my entire life but I mean hell it'll pay off one day <laughs> yes exactly it is paying off yes it is tell us and tell okay. everyone that's listening okay you said that you came out the closet so mm-hmm. um you how was that experience especially coming from Texas, a small farm town in Texas. I know that your parents, um, how, how did they react to it? Um, I think initially, I would say <laughs> initially, yes. So the first moments, I think that my parents were very in denial, mm-hmm. which was crazy to me because I had like high school musical <laughs> posters on my wall, I had Zac Efron <laughs> posters on my wall, Nick Jonas, I, I, Hell, girl, out of Sharpay it. Evans from fucking High School Musical. I'm like, how much gayer could I could I be? I mean, seriously, <laughs> just step away from so, the pink furry pillows. Uh, like that was gonna be exactly gay. Was- <laughs> no, but hell no, they wouldn't allow that when I was a kid. <laughs> And I was playing like all those sports and everything. So I like created this image for them that I was just this typical small farm town boy that's, you know, on the football team and all that. So they never suspected. Did you have girlfriends and stuff? I did have girlfriends. I mean, I never kissed any of them or fucked any of them. (laughs) Obviously. Okay. But are you a straight A? Um, 
Oh, well, do you do you know what that is? Is it like you've never touched yeah. a vagina? Yeah. So I, I think like, I'm like, like a Andy platinum because I came out of my mom feet uh, feet first because oh. I was born standing on business. <laughs> they had to shove me back in and get a C section. So I I ain't ever get done. Get out! That ain't slid you didn't even nothing. come out of a vagina. Yeah, like, <laughs> exactly. No vagina has ever I'm been not. in my life. That's for sure. So that's where I stand on that. But yeah. I love it. So you are super straight A. And exactly. I love that is too mm-hmm. funny. Mm-hmm. I thought Andy Cohen was the only one. Yeah, no. <laughs> Andy I'm Cohen. coming for Andy yeah, Cohen. Yeah, he's a straight A. Yeah, he's Damn. a straight A. Yeah, for sure. He talks about it. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> but yeah. um, okay, so when they found out what what did your mom say when you first told her? How did you tell them? Like, did you sit them down and was like, yo, you know, how did it come out? Cause I'm sure you were so like thought about a million ways mm-hmm. that you could do it or not you know me personally everyone i don't know if they knew it or not but i was bi well i'm bi but dated women exclusively for like five or six years and i i, I love studs my first Ooh. female encounter was um was a femme Beautiful. Actually, she's a doctor, and she's kind of known. I'll show you her IG <laughs> later. Oh, and shit. she's uh, gorgeous and doing major things right now. So shout out to you, boo boo. But I dated studs, you know. So my mom and my family were kind of like, "What the heck?" You know, like wow. and 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 it was like they always kind of knew because I was always like kind of the well the black sheep of the family that just mm-hmm. went and did my own thing unapologetically, but. They, um, to see me, you know, with, you know, a hardcore, you know, stud girl and dating her for like years or dating them for years, did several different studs. They never thought I was coming back, you know, nor did I. I was just like, oh, I'm just a lesbian. And I guess it just is what it is. And then, you know, I mean, but, you know, shit happens and you meet, you meet yeah. people. I know. She she tests my my lesbianness all the time. I know. I swear we're going to get married one day. But oh. <laughs> I'd love to put her on the spot. But so how did your family react when you, like, told them? Um... So, or how did you tell them? Oh, well, okay, so I went over to my Aunt Tamara's. And, Come on, Aunt Tamara. Yeah, my Aunt Tamara. You always have to have an Aunt Tamara, yeah, honey. Exactly. That will hold you down. I was just telling her <laughs> that I was like, okay, I'm gay. And I was like, I want to tell my parents, but I don't know how. And she's like, just do it. Just rip off the Band-Aid. Yeah. And so she took mm-hmm. me home, and we pulled in the driveway. And my mom and my brother had come out to say hi to my aunt. And I was like, immediately, Mom, I have to tell you something. And I didn't know what to say. Woo! And then my brother goes, you're gay. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I am. Because everyone always would call me gay. Like, the <laughs> running joke was how gay I was, right. always. Before yeah. I ever even realized that I was gay. So him saying that, it was like, that was something everyone was saying. So I just mm-hmm. was like, yeah. Finally, I was like, yes, I am. Yeah. Like, and duh. it didn't take me long either. Because I had realized freshman year, this was just the beginning of my sophomore year in high school. So Dang. I didn't waste no time. I was Good 15 years you. old. I didn't give a fuck. It was October 19th or 13th of 2013 it was mm. the day that I came out of the closet. Mm. And then I lost my virginity on Halloween oh, that year. Oh, wow, that mm-hmm. year. So mm-hmm. it took you, what, 11 days? I said, let's go with the yeah. 19th. So it took you like... <laughs> yeah, it didn't, I, I didn't waste no I time, know. honey. I was <laughs> horny as fuck. <laughs> Yeah. When I was 15 years old, yeah, damn, know, my sex drive hormones, was insane. I'm sure your hormones were going crazy, and you were like, mm-hmm. finally, I'm out the closet. Yeah. Let me just do. And oh my God. So, did you, were you with that person after? Did you guys have a relationship? Oh. Yeah. We started dating. We dated for a year. Oh um, gosh. How was that? Like just being that young and being. It was so magical. Because the, the night that I lost virgi- my virginity, I also had my first kiss. And it was on Halloween. Oh, everything. And I had every, I lo- everything, everything in one night. Everything. Look so at you. It was, um, I remember, like, my whole body, like, sparked up. And I had never felt love like that before. Aww. And um, it, we dated for almost a year, or maybe a little over a year, mm-hmm. my sophomore and junior year. Mm-hmm. And... I went like on trips with him. Mm-hmm. I would stay the night with him. How were his parents? I mean, because I'm assuming you guys were around the same age. 
Um, she... Yes, he was a senior. Okay. So he was graduating okay. whenever we were dating. Got it. Okay, so you're a sophomore. He's a mm-hmm. senior. Okay. Oh, I actually proposed to him. Stop it. This, I, this, this is embarrassing as fuck, but I wrote about it in my book. But I did, and I did propose to him. But I was so in love and infatuated with him that I was like, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with this person. Of course. But I feel like he also gave me like the savior complex. Mm. Not intentionally, but. Right. He I was like the came... wounded one and you were the one that were. Well, right, I, right. I just felt like I had been through so much being in the closet and then coming out and then he was immediately right there for me and so I felt so drawn to him as like Mm -hmm. this is my like a trauma bond he helps me like be Mm -hmm. myself and and he was just so sweet to me and stuff so I really enjoyed the time that I had with him and he had literally the biggest dick I had ever seen (laughs) in my life huge huge he was Puerto Rican it was like a two coke can cock I swear to god it was wild bro I so I'll never forget we him. We are serving with purpose, honey. He was serving with purpose that he day. He was serving something. <laughs> he was cooking. Do you for still me. think about him? Um, no, I only think about the sex. Okay. Nothing well, else. Do you feel like that was your only true con- like connection? It was just a physical thing, or was it more spiritual? Or um, it wasn't spiritual at all. Okay. I feel like. It just was And you exactly, know the difference. You knew the difference at that age. Yeah. What was like just... Well, not really. I didn't okay. really... I didn't have a spiritual awareness until 2019, so... How was that? Um, In what regard? Like, just discovering it? Or? Yeah. Like, how did you know, like, this is what... Because I, I heard you mention that you worked in a crystal store, mm-hmm. and you and I, like, I know how we manifest and how we do all that. Like, oh, all yeah. the things. We're so... Those were the hippies. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, that's what I want to do The with hippies with the crystals, and we, <laughs> you know, we hug trees, and we do all that. A hundred percent. So, how did you come into your spiritual awakening? Um, well, I had moved back in 2019, to McKinney right? yeah, in 2019. Mm-hmm. Well, I remember that one of the first things that I had seen was I pulled into the driveway and this giant butterfly had like landed on my uh, hood of my car and then flew off. And I was like, oh, that's a little weird. Mm-hmm. So then over the following weeks, I couldn't stop seeing butterflies. I mean, I was seeing them all day, every day. I had Get never out. seen butterflies like this tattoo. in my mm-hmm. life. That's my first tattoo. And uh, <laughs> so... I go to apply for jobs and I'm sitting on this patio in an interview and this butterfly comes like this in front of me and the person interviewing me, it lands on my shoulder. And at this point I was like telling this woman, I'm like, this is insane. This butterfly, like there's no way this is a coincidence because I've been bringing up like that I'm seeing butterflies everywhere for Mm. weeks now. Mm. So then I'm walking back to my car and there's this big arch to a restaurant called The Yard. And I see these two butterflies go like this. They catch my attention by a sparkle, like the light had hit them. And so I was like this. Oh, I think the butterflies are trying to get my attention. And they go like this underneath the word, the yard. And I was like, I think I'm supposed to go in there. And I, I so I decided to grab my last resume. I go in and I get hired on the spot and I started the next day. And I oh, met wow. my best friend that not, we got put in this separate um, little building to serve together. Mm-hmm. Her name's Paige. And so I met my best friend. She lives with me now, five years later. Aww. And so I wrote like a whole chapter of, on it in my book called Butterflies to Page. And Aww. so that was like one of the first things. And so I started to recognize that there was divine intervention at play and things were like catching my attention. And I just, I gained this awareness that there was more to reality than what meets the eye Mm. and i've never been a religious person Mm -hmm. but after that it was like every single day i was like developing my intuition i would just know certain things were happening when they would happen or i would wake up from dreams about someone and then there's a text on my phone from them that i hadn't heard from for months or just like the small things and i started seeing Mm -hmm. angel numbers like insanely Mm -hmm. and i think and then I started getting into like tarot cards and I would like, it would be so relatable to like what was going on in my reality. And then I would do it on all you my friends. you read the cards for you? Mm-hmm. I can read the cards for myself and other people. So, really? Yeah. Ooh. I actually did. I did Kim and Marcus it. last night. <laughs> did you? And I ate them up with that shit. So I, I can't like sit and tell you all of the information with each card, but I feel like I have some kind of vessel to the divine that mm-hmm. I can draw the cards for you. And then we can look that information up and it's going to correlate to your life experience or your identity right now in the moment, which I think is powerful too. Like I'm not about to sit here and learn 
there's like 76 cards, I think. And then each way with different cards is all different meaning. I'm like, I don't got time for all that. But I know I got the <laughs> gift to grab the right card for you. And then we'll go from there. And you we'll know what go I mean? from there. And that's still magical in itself. Oh, to 100%. Even have that, so oh, to be that I'm in grateful tune? for that. Oh, yeah. Okay. And if you guys don't know, Kim um, and Marcus are both servers at Sir. They're um, a recent couple. So I'd love to have them on soon. But, yes, um, you should. I'm so scared. So Jehovah's Witnesses um, is what I grew up, you know, into the into that religion, and they were they forbade is it forbode or forbade or forbid it <laughs> all of that um, tarot mm -hmm. anything that was of that nature. They felt like it was of the devil. Um, did your parents ever were they like? Did they ever were they religious people? Um, they were a little religious. They okay. were not crazy religious. Okay. But the, I grew up in a Bible Belt, like, right. Baptist town. Oh, hell yeah. Town. Oh, yeah. So it was very sure. big there. Sunday but, night football. Like, yeah, I mean, exactly. yeah, Friday night lights. Yeah. Sunday. All that. Yeah, That's church what I grew up and, with. and football on Sunday. And I yeah. did go to church a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. I, I even went after I came out of the closet a couple of times. Look at, now, how, how do you feel as far as religion versus spirituality. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, 100%. Mm -hmm. So I think about this and talk about it all the time. Religion oh, to me mm -hmm. is like you're worshiping an entity or, you know, a set of guidelines that you kind of follow in your life mm. rather than, and then, you know, there's like 4,000 religions. So whichever one that you're following, you have your guidelines that, that believe in that and then whatever God you believe in, um, you, you believe like that's, the entity to worship, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And so for spirituality, it's more of an inheritance that we all have. Mm -hmm. And as we go through our daily lives, like the way that you interact with your physical reality, whether it's with your mind or your community or whatever the hell it might be, mm -hmm. that would be spirituality to me. It's like, mm -hmm. a, it's already made into us. It's not a construct that's created. So spir like spiritual enlightenment is just having the awareness that there is that you do have this spiritual intelligence within you already versus religion is like a man-made construct that's created that people follow that's the difference okay oh i love that and that's just the facts no matter who wants to argue about that <laughs> You guys, I know if you guys want to hear more about that, just uh, hit Venus up with your Instagram, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Inbox him and just say, yes, I agree with you and I know mm -hmm. and I love you because mm -hmm. I felt the same way. I was under this burden of religion, but then now I became spiritual and here's my, exactly. you know, mm -hmm. I love that. The spirituality has got, mm -hmm. it's made all of my dreams come true. I know that's right. So and it's just because you get that, that intuitive power power and then you're unstoppable because then you can make all the right choices that align you to your destined dream. I love that. Now, when you say that, because I feel the same way, um, I feel like there's certain things that get the signal crossed. You know what I mean? Like there's certain barriers for me where I don't like I'm seeking it, but it's not always so clear. Mm -hmm. What do I do in that? where there's a blockage or there's something that, and I know what I have to do, probably stop smoking weed. <laughs> well, yeah, there's probably something in your life that you need to change. Oh, like, am I high? <laughs> For because three I weeks. really want to get the, <laughs> the signal. <laughs> it's right there, but I just can't get the answer. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. There's something blocking it then. Mm -hmm. So whatever's mm -hmm. in your life, whether it's a person, circumstance, you mm -hmm. know, situation, mm -hmm. Until that's released, then you probably won't find your next puzzle piece to, mm. or the next stepping stone to the most ideal version that you're looking for of yourself or your life. Oh, you just made everything so clear, Venus. Venus, can you real. read my soul? I know. Um, Do you need <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know really what to read. I, I my, for me. Do you need the cards? I don't or, even need the cards. Okay. I think in general, like my intuition comes to me just when I need to see it the most rather rather than just coming up to someone and being like, I can read your whole life. Well, I'm not like a psychic <laughs> like that, mm -hmm. but I definitely have psychic abilities. A hundred percent. Oh, I've man. had dreams of the future. Yeah. I mean, people but for your life low key. Oh, like, yeah. oh shoot. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When people pass, I've had so many interactions with that. Like. Really? mind-blowing ones yeah you, you, you can't even deny this at this yeah, point like, and people like people who are skeptics on psychics it's like no i will explain to you my experience and there's no way you can um try to argue with mm -hmm. that which to me just proves that mm -hmm. they're not only 
is an afterlife, but that there's the afterlife can communicate with you 100%. once they've passed. Mm-hmm. So that means they're observing you and they can like interact with your physical reality. So that's even crazier to me. Dang. And so, you can't disprove it. I have like the proof. Right. I mean, it is what it is. You could feel however you want about mm-hmm. it. Yeah. But, you know, like yeah. I know for sure. Um, you know, how I was raised, it would be like, oh, that's the devil. Oh, yeah. that's demons telling them. You know, mm-hmm. like, does it that's have to be? That's just closed-mindedness at yeah. this point. Mm-hmm. I, I want to tell the story of my Uncle Randy when Please. he passed. Come on, Uncle Randy. He passed. Aww. He, 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 I know, I know. I said rest. I'm just, <laughs> rest no, he was, he was an amazing Shout person out. and everything. <laughs> but the way that he passed really changed my perspective on life. So mm-hmm. it was during COVID, and he was in a coma for a little bit. And I was driving into the Ralph's parking lot on Ventura Boulevard in Sherman Oaks. Mm -hmm. And as I'm pulling into the parking garage, um, this man walks in front of my car. And I I thought to myself, that man looks identical to my Uncle Randy. I go to pull down into the parking garage and I put my car in park like this. And as I did that and put it in park, my phone that's sitting next to my thigh lights up. And it's a message that says, your Uncle Randy's gone. And then that night, I had a dream of two trucks parked in a field with all four doors open and their lights all beaming on my Uncle Randy, who's standing right there in front of the two trucks. And each person, so there's one person standing behind each door open, and it's my aunt, me, my grandma, and my grandpa. And he's just standing there looking at all of us doing this smiling huge Stop. smiling like this oh my god the that night that so he scary. passed away that is so, so not only scary. did i dream but i also saw Ooh. him seconds before oh my god right the mess. I you got, got the, the message so and then the next not even like a few days later i pull up to a gas station my aunt's texting me that was her um his wife and there is the word or the name randy and 777 scratched into my gas pump <gasps> stop that that is oh when i say i get goosebumps and chills like because i know it's true it's crazy and how it's it's inexplicable so that helped me with his death it put me at peace (laughs) with like i know that he's still around and he's communicating with me so and are you okay see now mm, every i remember just growing up when i would hear that and it's just so like mm, religion could be really um a great thing or it can also be something that you, I guess, almost live in fear, I want to say. Yeah. I know I can't speak for other people, but for me specifically, it would be things like that. Like, oh, if someone passed and you had a vision or something or just could have swore that you saw him, it was like, no, that was a demon. That wasn't your grandma. Mm-hmm. That was this. That was that. It was evil. Whatever it was was evil. It wasn't natural. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So That's their own to, interpretations of their own projections of what they fear inside or believe. Thank so you. So it's subjective. And a hundred percent to see you talk about it, it sounds like such a beautiful thing. Right? You know what and I mean? People would and think being I'm able crazy to... for that. But I'm like, you can't even make that shit up. Like, no, you can't. Like the coincidences are. Yeah. I mean, there's no such thing as a coincidence there because you we go. live in a we mathematical in universe, so where everything is calculated. Hello, you better. And that's the period. <laughs> I love it. Who knew that uh, Venus was this beautiful and also so deep inside and out? Okay. Hello. We don't want no surface level shit. No. Okay. Now, speaking of that, when you said that you first came to Hollywood, you saw the inauthenticity. In, is that the word? <laughs> oh it was asking yes. the knowing I know, I know. <laughs> Seeing the fake and the phony, you honey. Seeing the fake and the phony. <laughs> the I've fake had and a the lot phony. Of my fair share of seeing this. And here. the clout chasers. Clout chasers, for sure. And the liars. Liars. Yeah, we got a lot of shit going on out here in LA. <laughs> Luckily, when I was working in the, in the Valley, there are a lot of pure souls out there that aren't into the superficialness of the city. So it's really nice and comforting when I'm around those types of people because they have no ulterior motives besides just community and love and support, right? I love that. Then you come out here and, you know, there are a lot of positive people too as well, but you always have to watch your back because... People are here to get what they want and they'll do anything that they have to Mm -hmm. to get what they want rather than just let it naturally come to them. If they deserve it, they'll get it. Mm -hmm. It's already written in the stars for them. So if you have to 
try this hard or manipulate people, then it's only going to backfire on you. Thank you. So, I yeah, I choose if to. If you're stay. a star, you're a star. There it is, and no one can take that away from you. So it's I love no now. Yeah, do you? Yeah, when I ca first came, I came from New York, so New York were very spoiled there. Mm -hmm. They didn't like here. I didn't like. He I thought that was was a nice space for me because they're um, European descendant, so I'm. Um, Italian, so the Italian community embraced me. Mm -hmm. When I came here, I was like, okay, I don't <laughs> belong here. Then went to the Bay Area and was worse. I was like, okay, mm. <laughs> I love LA now. She went to Oakland. <laughs> no, close to. <laughs> close to. <laughs> Very close. I went to San Jose. And they were like, they don't like me. No. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oakland, they would like me. They I would to... love you. Are you kidding me? Oh, I was they made in Harlem. I was making all the Oakland. There was nothing right. wrong oh, with Oakland. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. it was of course. Uh, Tree Valley, whatever. Mm -hmm. But now I love here. You know, even like, you know, some people are superficial, but it's not that bad. They're just following their dreams. They oh. still, you know, want to be artistic and nice. So it's there is worse. Yeah. People are much more fake there yeah. than here. Huh? You think well, here no. you know what you're expecting. You know, mm -hmm. you know. They want something from you. There, they are very fake. Oh, okay. okay. So it's not I, as I like straightforward. Yeah. Right. It's just yes. behind the scenes. Like they'll just, oh, they're schmooze. At least yeah. here, it's like you can see it coming a mile away. Yeah. It's like all of a That's sudden. That's true, I guess. That's funny. Oh, I like here and I love here now. <laughs> Yay! And we love you too. Yeah. I'm Thank glad you, you came. I'm staying. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I'm never leaving, so I get it. Oh, I love mm -hmm. that. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're made your mind up. There's no New York for you. There's no Chicago, um, I mean, I'll go do Miami. Of course. Reason. But other than that, like, no, I, I would travel to all of these places, but mm -hmm. I'm manifesting a compound in Malibu, and that's it. Aww. Oh, that's it. Okay, I love that. In uh, Malibu? Mm -hmm. do you, okay, so why Malibu? Just curious. Malibu just, it has its own frequency. It's a completely different realm. Like, as soon as you enter Malibu, it's just... The oh, ocean is... Yeah, mm -hmm. the energy is completely different. The vibes, um, it's just so beautiful. I just feel so at peace in my that's heart when rich. I'm in Malibu. <laughs> I know, that's what I was thinking of. Mm -hmm. It is, it's very... It's so it's, beautiful. Whenever you want to manifest but, something, the ocean is the best place because it goes to the whole universe. <clears throat> Okay, good. That's good when to you know. When you want to send something to the universe, mm -hmm. you know, the ocean is the best place to do it. I, I like love that. that. Mm -hmm. I know. I love mm -hmm. it, too. I was just thinking of, you know, I'm thinking of you being 26 and living mm -hmm. in Malibu with all the retirees, you know. And, and not that you're Justin <laughs> Bieber. I'm just saying that you're not going to party like that, especially mm -hmm. now that he has a kid. But... You know, but they will call the police on your ass. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Hell, I, that's why I was like, Malibu, no, you can't play I'm your music, my you can't not nothing. I ain't going to be around nobody. I don't have no neighbors. The hell? I'll have horses running around me. I love you. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, no. That is too funny. Okay, so we're going to play F. Mary Kill. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Are you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm scared, but bring it. <laughs> Don't be scared, baby. You are way too fly to be scared. Okay, so. Worst come short, just kill the person. Yeah, you know? just kill okay. everyone. That's fine. Kill just everyone. kill everyone. I'll probably I'll fuck kill them all. Them. <laughs> Let's go. There's my boo boo. Okay, so F. Mary Kill, the. Sir uh, Edition. Sir. Oh, God. Okay. We're going to play Sir first, and then we'll play Vanderpump Rules. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So, sir, you would have to because I mean, will that make sense for our audience? If well, they, if you don't know who they are, go to sir. Exactly. Me yeah. Hello. Oh, she you're gonna said know. It, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Boop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay. So, f Mary kill. Who would you f? Ooh. Are you not From gonna give sir. me an options? So, from, uh, wait, no, uh -uh. Okay. no, it's Stop just it. Mary Kill Fuck. from oh, Sir, shit. from okay. Sir. Okay, so let's okay, All let's right. go, let's go with the people that they know of: Michael Grandchelli, Linda, Peter, F. Mary Kill. <laughs> These are all people that have been on Serving Fuck with Mary Purpose. Kill. They are. I'd all... kill Mike, <laughs> of course, and I would. <laughs> Say you that Peter. Not Go ahead and Peter. say it. Not Peter. <laughs> well, damn oh, okay. sure ain't gonna be Linda. Well, I ain't killing Peter, so I guess I'm gonna have to marry him and fuck Linda. <laughs> All right, I am fuck a woman. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And now he's yeah. not a straight A. He's a B. <laughs> Straight B. See, Lina. No, no, 100%. But <laughs> if, if we, can we do the whole crew? Can okay. I add in that? Okay, okay. 
So we'll do F, Mary, kill. <laughs> you pick. And you pick. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Um, yes. So who would you F? I want to know. Mm, just, just for one good fuck? Yeah. One good one. And it's your best one too. The best since your first. God. <laughs> Think of Paolo. Hell no. <laughs> oh hell to the no. Don't even with me on that one. Um, Shout out to Paolo. Love you. Um, Paolo's hot. He. I mean, yeah, he is hot, but I just don't see him like that. And I he's got my it. best friend's boyfriend. I so know it's like, that no. is so true. Um, Shout out to. Nah, nah. <laughs> we love you, girl. Well, I definitely would marry Lubisha. Mm. Just so we could fuck as many times as I want. Hello. I feel you on that. Shout out to Lubisha. Shout out to Claire, his fiance. He is getting married and <laughs> I can't even say what I was thinking just now, actually. Say it. I know. It's gonna it's gonna have be like Lubisha, you came up. You came up on the show. Um, <laughs> mm. Mm. Fuck it, once. Yadier. Oh, Yadier. Um, you, you guys got to look. I mean, he's Come a sexy man. Sir. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Come to Sir <laughs> and check out Yadier. Yes. And he's kill. a beautiful bartender, Cuban. He has a beautiful Fuckable. accent. <laughs> yeah. I can't say that. I already got one. <laughs> His Ooh. name is Remy. <laughs> Yeah, Remy's amazing. Yes. Oh, I'm glad you he like is. Remy. I love Remy. Yeah. His energy's we so love good. Remy. I, I can't wait for the wedding. Oh. <laughs> Remy, right? <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Who you're going to kill? It's, kill is just difficult. It's I like, know. who do I hate the I most? I said I would kill Demi. <laughs> <laughs> We already killed Mike. And yeah, Mike. we already killed Mike. I mean, he's I mean, the first one to go. What about. No, I'm not going to say <laughs> Nandi. <laughs> Nandi, I love Nandi. We love Nandi. I'd probably just kill Israel because he gets on my fucking nerves. I understand. Aww. I was just waiting for it. I was like, <laughs> no, I'm trying to throw Nandi in there too to try I to. I didn't want to say it, but like, <laughs> but if we, we want to go Nandi. there. <laughs> I know. So, yeah. Ooh, that one. Um, If you guys don't know, you guys got to watch um, Vanderpump Rules. I think it was season <laughs> e 10? No, e 11. 11 was last season. Okay, so that would be where he was uh, probably got the most um, view time, I guess. A few blinks of an eye. Yeah, he would be over in the in the pool area. Um, I That's saw Tom and, Sandoval's. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, what? Um, speaking. Well, dang, I don't even know what to say now. I'm like <laughs> Vanderpump Rules edition. I know right? Vanderpump <laughs> Rules edition. Let's go. I'm crying. <laughs> yeah, bring it. Okay, so <laughs> F. Mary Kill, Ariana, <gasps> Katie, Sheena. Let's just do kill the women. Sheena. Okay. <laughs> Mary Ariana. <laughs> Who was the second one? Katie. Katie. Fuck Katie. Yeah. <laughs> that was easy. I that know. was so easy for me. I know. Okay, so that was okay. So <laughs> we're, no, we're gonna. I did it for the women and then men. I'm almost. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. F. Mary kill. Um. Kill Jax, and then Tom Schwartz. And then I don't even want to say the the. How about oh Brett Caprio. Brett from season like yep. six or seven. <laughs> yeah. Oh fuck him. Uh, kill Jax. Okay. Mary Schwartz. Aww. Same. And you're gonna kill Sheena. Definitely. Why? <laughs> because she's like the worst friend ever. Oh, she's the best friend ever. Oh, how oh, is she the worst? Friend. I really want to know why. No, oh, I've watched eleven seasons of Vanderpump Rules. It is clearly obvious that Sheena has got terrible loyalty issues, and Does she's she? got a lot of. I told you. I'm just I'm not a big fan. Really. Of Sheena? Look how she acted this last season. Her and Lala turned on fucking Ariana. Like, okay. I can't get over that. I thought she was an opportunistic Oh, person. you did say that. She was like, dang. Yeah. And I was ride or die. Yes. And um, Sorry about it. I, I like, I want I think that that comes girl. from. I got She's you. not. 
Mm. And She's I don't the trust heart. girls that aren't girls' girls. Mm. Do you think Katie's a girl's girl? Oh, 100%. That's no, why yeah. I love Katie. I know. I knew you were going to say that. The I love seeing real. girls support other girls. And if it if they're not, then I don't even want to acknowledge you. Do you feel like Lala is a girl's girl? Um, I used to think so. But after this past season, I'm like, definitely not. She why? actually turned me off completely opposite of what I used to think about her. Really? I was obsessed. She was like my second favorite because, of course, Stassi's my favorite. Oh, but, really? Yes, I'm obsessed with Stassi. That's so Always funny. loved her. Really? We have similar yeah. birthdays, like days Ooh, apart. I love that. Actually, me, Ariana, and Stassi. Oh, yeah, because don't they we're have the same birthday? We're June Cancers. Yeah. Yeah, we're June Cancers, so it's oh. like... <laughs> Yeah, this last season threw me off a little bit of Lala, but we met her. She yeah, we so met her at the yeah. Grove. She was yeah. so Jesus sweet. Christ, she was so sweet. And it was totally different. It was so funny because I always thought who I would like coming in, mm -hmm. you know, working at Sir, like, oh, this is the person I know. They're a friend in my head. I already know. Mm -hmm. They're gonna we're gonna mm -hmm. be like this, or just at least it, you know, I mean, not a stand, but you know, it was like <laughs> more like, you know, I know we'll click. And I thought she was one of the people for sure. I would give Lala a chance. I would probably never give Sheena a chance, though. Really? Yeah. So Sheena was the one that was actually the... She welcomed me, you know, like very sweet, Well, very she's a cool. pick me. So of course she's going to be welcoming. Ah. <laughs> like, that's just the, that's just the facts. <laughs> I don't want no part of none oh, of that. Oh, what did Shayna do to you? Oh, what did Shayna do to you? It's like, I just want to. She would know. make some of the episodes drag for me, so oh, it was just annoying. I'm really? like, girl, get out of my camera, get out of my TV. <laughs> 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 so tell me how, like, that she's giving hater. Think about whenever Ariana got to be on Dancing with the Stars, and oh. then she made it about herself. Like, yeah, that was crazy. like, okay, that's supposed to be your friend, girl. Yeah. Shut the hell up. Oh, she's then, not even on this season. I thought she was gonna be on this season. Oh, like, she don't you know, get it. That's her karma. Dang. No, Vanderpump is there, so. Dang. It's not Ariana's fault that she's not there. Yeah. Right. She could be on this like, season, she's not. Yeah. Right. Or I any mean, of the past season, she's been in the public eye for, for like, years. What, 11, 11 years. 11 years. Yeah, I guess so, huh? Ooh, I don't know. Maybe it's that blockage. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, she she definitely blocking <laughs> blessings because she don't know what side of history to be on. Dang, really? Yeah. I love your strong Clearly. opinions. I mean, this it's is just everything. The facts for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm watching. I'm, I sat down and watched the whole damn season. Me I'm, too. Like, yeah. I got eyes. I've been watching <laughs> since season one, since it was Real Housewives of Beverly Hills that so segued into Vanderpump Rules. I was always Falling a Falling in love with head. Lisa. Oh, man, I loved it. Uh, oh, Lisa, <laughs> shoot. I was about to say Lisa Renna is who I, you know, very much really? so connect with. Me and her, she's we're like so the funny. Everyone uh -huh. always says I'm like the Lisa Renner. She's a cancer. I too. love Lisa Renner. Thank <laughs> you. I'm like, that's who I, but I always loved the, the humor and Lisa mm -hmm. Vanderpump, she was always so funny to me. Like, dang, she had that British humor. That well, Lisa hilarious. Vanderpump is the queen. I mean, come yeah. on, She man. rules the world. All hell to yeah. Lisa Vanderpump. I work I at mean, Sir for Lisa Vanderpump, thank you. not same. Vanderpump rules. Same, same. And that's on period. Same, same, honest. I actually work for Sir, which is her restaurant, because I knew, you know, whether I got the job or not, or, you know, was on the show or not, I knew that that money from that restaurant was gonna be paying my bills That's true. well. You know what I'm saying? And so it, it was like, just and us, uh, as my daughter would say, and us. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing, amazing. So we are so grateful to Lisa Vanderpump in conclusion. Mm -hmm. But um, tell everyone where to find you. Are you working on any modeling gigs? Are you doing any, I mean, we already know, we really He's a writer on reality network oh for sure yeah i write articles for reality network yes i do reality news with peter yes and mel and you can't talk about but he's working on a project you guys that i know specifically that we can't discuss yeah, yeah. but you guys just stay, stay tuned, tuned. Just stay keep tuned watching. <laughs> because i'm i'm going for world domination oh come yeah. on man as long as you rule with love oh, that's ruling all. with love and just <laughs> 
helping everyone make all their dreams come true is my oh, number God. one goal. Oh, and to make so a huge nice. impact but on the world. But you do that already. Well, I'm trying. <laughs> I'll never stop. It's only going to get better. <laughs> it's only going to get better. Okay, so tell everyone where to find you. Instagram. You can find me on Instagram at Venus Goddess Mermaid. Any it's social media, mermaid. it's going to be Venus Goddess Mermaid because oh. obviously the hair. Hello. The body. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Oh. And can the energy. You, can you just stand up for everyone yeah, just to show? Oh, I don't think they can. I do. No, I mean, I just oh, want to yeah, see yeah. that. Yes! Oh, you can show that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, our views just shot up. Thank, Thank you so much. Other guests, show you can you show hair. that's the quality we want <laughs> next time? Hello, yeah. oh, please. Let them know. Okay. Yes. You set that the, the dress code, I set okay? the standard okay. and the filter. <laughs> I love you so much, Venus. You. you are amazing. Thank you guys for having me. Are you so sweet? Me. I've never opened up about coming out of the closet before, like on camera Aww. or anything. So. Really? Yeah. This was the first time. I'm so happy. How do you feel about it? I feel good. Okay. I'm like, it looks like I'm going to be talking about this for years to come. Yes, so. 100%. So get used to it, baby. And I wrote about it all in my book. So that's when you're one thing. Please tell us. Please tell us. Yeah. So I've, I've been writing a book. I think want to say it's going to be called It's All About the Climb by Venus Binkley. Ooh. And basically, it's my whole, it's like a hero's journey. You get to see where I come from, from mm -hmm. a small kid, basically from when I was born to making all my dreams come true in the end. Yes. So, and it's Finish your writing. amazing. Uh, I am finished, but I'm trying to add like some little things here and there. It's kind of open-ended mm -hmm. finish. Mm -hmm. And then I need to make some changes for people that have come in and out of my life that have done me wrong. I was going to ask. other than that, um, <laughs> I was, do you she's have, together. Okay. And I'm sure, and I ask this of every guest, um, is there anyone special in your life that you're seeing? Or are you kind of like on the field <laughs> or off the field? or? Um... So I'm not seeing anyone. First off, I haven't had sex in six years. Oh. I haven't dated or done anything oh my God. in my you 20s. Won't. You won't. You oh. won't. So I'm waiting for someone who's going to be emotionally intelligent and just self-aware. Mm. And how they treat other people is a huge thing for me. Thank you. And I haven't met anyone. And especially service. In the service industry, you guys, I do the same thing. I'm sorry to cut you off, no, but it's 100% yeah. what you said, how they treat other people. Exactly. Especially in, power, in, in, in positions of, you know, in lower positions. Like, how are you treating your, you know, the janitor or the maid or the server or whoever 100%. is in the service, you know? Even their friends and family, too. Yes, like, of course. Like, it tells me a lot about someone. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Aww. And how they feel about themselves. I want someone who believes in themselves and is powerful and has that strive to do and believe in that they can get anything that they want. I don't want a guy that thinks less than that. I want someone who's going to match my energy. And if we're not on the same frequency, it ain't happening. So I'll stay single mm -hmm. for into my 30s until I find someone who Matches. holds themselves to a higher standard and Ooh. gives me some respect. Oh! Amen. Hello. <laughs> oh. I'm going to have my daughter, you know, you guys are going to exchange Instagrams. I love it. Because you guys would just yes. ping pong off of each other. It's oh, you guys truth. are air signs. That's mm -hmm. why. Gemini and Aquarius. I love Geminis. They're my I favorite love. sign. Oh, that's um, Audrey. Shout out to my baby Audrey. Hi, Audrey. Shout out to me. Yes. So beautiful. Oh, my we angel. To bring her here. I know. Let's bring I, her you know here. She's gorgeous. Yes. <laughs> exactly. And she can, like, take care of her money. <laughs> I I'm love obsessed. it. Okay, so I'm sorry. Venus, mermaid, goddess. Goddess, mermaid. Venus, wait. It's Venus, goddess, mermaid. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Venus, <laughs> goddess, <laughs> mermaid. You can find me on all the socials. Yes. And trust me, you're going to be seeing me pretty soon. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Anywhere and that a TV will be probably. Hello. <laughs> DMs will be Are filled. Are you an actor as well? Um, I'm not an actor, but I don't no, like don't. to limit myself. I think there's nothing uh -huh. I can't do. So Hello. whatever opportunity comes my way, I'm on that shit, and I'm yes. going to take over. Hell yes! <laughs> Ooh, if I could just have your confidence bottled, <laughs> when I, I was would buy that right? shit, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I would buy it, okay? I'd be flying Aww. off the shelves. <laughs> just the facts. I mean, Man. But thank you guys so much for having me. I'm so uh, proud of you guys for thank doing this. You. And you deserve this, and I hope that... It just keeps growing and growing and growing. And you know it, baby. We're already at 12,000 views. I, love that. I know. Can you well, imagine? I'm all together. Oh, stop it all together, huh? Yeah, nice. Just theater, yeah. 
That's Dang. good. Dang. And yeah, d- literally August 20th, right, was when we – Was the first Was our one first out. episode was August 20th. Less it hasn't even been a month. Damn, that's I'm good. I'm just trying to say okay. hello. <laughs> you know Peter's about to eat this one up. Oh, you know yeah. it is. Oh, he already is eating, honey. He's eating. <laughs> shout out to my three really Yes, shout out we to Peter. We love you, Peter. Yeah. So thank you again for coming. Did you have fun? I love it. Yay. It's amazing. Maybe come back in one year. Let's see I where know, right? And see where things go. I know, it's a, we gonna have to be joined. I know, I know. we have to get, get our famous for us, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we'll be able to afford it, bro. Know. Don't forget <laughs> us, okay? Please don't forget about the little people, okay? <laughs> I could never. <laughs> I love you. Well, yes, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and comment. And uh, we'll see you next week. Yes! <laughs> we love you, everyone. Thank you.